our pre-show, we are here with uh, Jeff Blanchard, our co-host, and Larry Becker. He's back Hi. joining us. We're, we're very honored to have him back here. And um, we're just going to go through our shots real quickly, make sure everything is looking good. Okay, I'm here. Jeff, there is What's Larry. Yeah. And here is Jeff and Larry. Yes. That's Larry and myself. And here we go, Jeff, you and I. Yeah. That was off? That was off. Okay. What me? Yep. Testing one, two, three, four. Yep, yeah, I'm here. What was I'm off? Quite a big head. Oh, just big. Yes. <laughs> this is the no two shot. Overpowered. And then this is the three shot here. Oh, okay. Oh, That's okay. So that one was Jeff. Yes. I'm sorry. Okay. That was Jeff right there. Cool. Because yeah. I was thinking I didn't see anything different. Okay, one shot and the three shot. Well, actually, here, you can... I know you like gear, Larry. So this is all our sound stuff right around here. Yeah, yeah. It's fun. You know, we could make it a lot simpler. <laughs> that would be too easy. Yeah, you don't want to do that. I, you know what? I, I've been going through this class, and uh, I, I'm just editing the heck out of it and doing all kinds of fun stuff. And, mm -hmm. and um, the software that I use just got updated last week. And so I've already started adding in some of the new features and things that it can do just because. It's fun. <laughs> it's, it's fun. All right, so I think we're good. So we're going to do okay. the intro, Larry. We'll, we'll run the, sh the show music, and then we'll start. Did you want to focus on anything today? I know you've got new products out, and uh, new stuff yeah. is going on with you. So that, before yeah, we talked I'll last time, it was about two weeks before NAB. Right, right. And now that that's under my belt, I've got Photoshop World coming up next month. I've got some classes coming up with uh, Kelby, but my own stuff is um, finally, finally getting here because I'm so used to doing things mm -hmm. too and uh, at work and for other people mm -hmm. that it's it's finally time that I get to do my own stuff. <laughs> oh, that's so great. This weekend is it. Yeah, hey, we're cheering for you. All right, so Thank we're going to switch a shot and we're going to start the show recording in three. Two and one. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tech Down Over. I'm Rick Sinati, and I'm joined today by our co host, my good friend, Jeff Blanchard. Hey, Jeff, how are you? Good, thank you, Rick. Up to show 75. No, no, no. That was like three shows ago. <laughs> I oh, think this is 78. Oh. <laughs> 78, they, gee. We're they, going come, they come at you fast. And... Yeah, yeah we've right. added a whole mess of shows. Mm. Yeah, here we go. And we are back. Gee, that was funny. The intro was staggering over there. It was struggling. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, that's bandwidth. why I get confused how many shows because it's so much fun with all the uh, great people we get to talk to. It is, and we've got a great person to talk to today again. We've got with us mm -hmm. Larry Becker. Larry Becker was on right before NAB, and he's had a whole mess of projects going on. And Larry, how are <laughs> you today? I am happy to be here. Thanks very much for the invite back. I appreciate it. Oh, we're very happy to have you here. And, and we've been checking out your website, and you've got some new mm. products and things coming yeah. up you want to talk a little bit about some of the new stuff uh oh yeah i i think i might <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i have been um uh, i've been doing a lot of work with other people and in between i've been trying to do my own stuff again and uh, so i i've been able to do that over at larrybecker.tv i actually have a class now it's a mini class but i have a class about doing your first video if you've never done videos on your own for business doing your first video um and putting that on your website. So that little mini class is out there. Uh, that's actually going to go out to a bunch of JV websites in the next week or two. And so at the point that that happens, it's actually going to cost a little bit more. The, the price goes up. So people that know me now are getting it for less. The other thing that I've been working on is uh, a longer class, a more robust class, that is consistent with some consulting that I've been doing. So I help people be on camera and deliver the kinds of messages that, that help them in their business. And so I put together a uh, 20 lesson, uh, about an hour and a half, two hour long class on being on camera 
and writing scripts and how to read from a teleprompter and the things that you care about as a presenter on camera. So that'll be coming up in the next, uh, that's going to be finished in editing this weekend. And so it'll be coming up in the next week or so that that'll go live. And I've been doing daily YouTube videos mm. um, for the past three weeks. And I'm going to try and do that every single weekday where I just go on and do some quick tips and tricks and uh, tell some people about uh, simple in-house video production for people that are not video production people. You know, those are all really good things. Starting with the welcome type videos on websites. Most people don't know how to do those. Right. But I'm really interested in what you're doing with the how to present yourself on camera. Yeah, it's a it's a little bit different thing because um, we were talking before the show. Mm -hmm. There are times that when I was getting used to being on camera, I was doing things wrong. I'm talking about for years. It took me a long time to figure out how to do certain things on camera and come across better. And what was interesting to me is I would see something that a presenter is doing and try and incorporate that into one of my presentations, whether it's a B and H review or a Kelby training class or something I was doing for Canon. And then I would hear people say, man, you are so good on camera. I love when you did that, that particular thing. Now, they didn't know the things that I was doing behind the scenes, the things that I changed, the things that, um, I, I, that were going through my head. They just said, you're really good on camera. That was all that came across to them. But mm -hmm. at the same time, I'm thinking, well, I've got to look at the camera in this way. I've got to mm -hmm. make sure that I smile. I've got to get rid of this or that verbal tick. And I've got to use this kind of language or that kind of language. So it was, it was a really long learning process. And so now I'm doing coaching in that area. And I'm also, uh, that's why I decided to put together that whole concept as a class. Because I really don't think anybody else is doing it. The people that are teaching how to be on camera teach you how to be a newscaster or they teach you, um, I went to film school and I know how to film really well and mm -hmm. I can get you to look at the camera. But a lot of the film school people love the interview style um, mm -hmm. people on camera and so you're not connecting. You're not looking at the camera so you're not connecting and you're, you're missing a big opportunity there on the web. And so they film the whole thing where it looks like this. And they're just looking <laughs> off to the side like they're not talking to anybody yeah. or they're talking to somebody <clears throat> off camera. Mm -hmm. and, and you lose credibility. You lose the ability yeah. to, to connect with people. And so those are the kinds of things that took me a while to learn um, what to do and how to do it. And I'm still not perfect. I'm still learning a lot of things. But uh, I've got a lot to, to share with people. There's, there's a weird thing people are doing right now on interviews. And it... Or, or when they're talking on their own. And I find it absolutely bizarre. First, they're centered. They're looking at the camera. Then you see them here. And then you see, <laughs> and, I, and that side shot is the weirdest shot. It's totally disconnected I, from that. everything. I don't get it. So, so what's going on probably is somebody's learned a technique. So <laughs> this happens all the time. Somebody's yeah. learned a technique, and the technique is... I'm addressing this camera straight ahead, mm -hmm. and I know that, and I'm also going to put my smartphone over across the room to get a second shot, because I've seen that in the news, I've seen it on, yes. uh, you know, Good Morning America, I've seen that second shot, the alternate angle, and but they don't know how or what to do as that alternate angle, right. and so it's just different, they, it's wrong, but it's different, and uh, yeah, that's that's what they're doing, it's, they're, it's a, they're experimenting. Yeah, and it's such a... To me, at that moment, they've just lost the audience because it's just like, why sure. is this guy looking totally the other way? What's he looking at? Um, it's a weird you camera know, angle, and not everybody has a good profile. So now you're straight on. Well, I've got a terrible profile. <laughs> I, I won't let. I won't let camera. I I actually set up my webcam so that it's eye to eye, eye level right now. Because if you uh, if you saw me from a low angle, I have this whole thing going on. I I hate this. This right yeah. here. Yeah, it's it's I hate it. It's heredity. Uh, it's a family <laughs> thing. And uh, I've lost all kinds of weight. And I weigh the least I have since high school right now. And mm -hmm. I still have this thing. So, yeah, I, I, I know. I know. <laughs> yeah, I lost 55 pounds and it's still kind of right right here. It's like yeah, you yeah. live with it. 
Larry, I've been enjoying your daily videos, and one thing I particularly like about them is as well is the, the just nice, just a nice length. You just get into them, and then you get me excited for waiting for the next next day's instalment. You're too kind. Thank you very much. Yeah, the uh, the daily videos are. I think I try and keep it to one topic. I try and keep it under or around five minutes. Sometimes I try and hit the three minute mark. Uh, but the the whole point of my free daily YouTube videos is to help people with just little nuggets of information that they don't know, and it's a way for people to get to know me, know, like, and trust you with uh, with video. And so I'm trying to do a little bit of audience building that way. And I wanted to get 15 or so under my belt, and I've done that now. Uh, and then what I'll be doing, I do them also as blog posts, but now I actually have enough of a foundation that I can start to reach out and co-market with some joint venture partners and uh, let other people know to point people to my YouTube channel and I'll keep delivering content because it's, it's really kind of funny. I've got a playlist over at my YouTube channel of me on other people's YouTube channels and there are like 200 videos there and I've got millions and millions of views and my daily video today probably has 10 views. <laughs> so... So I have a ways to go to uh, develop my own YouTube channel, but I'm working on that. And uh, I haven't reached out to my friends at B&H yet. They did call me this week. There's a big project coming up that they want me to work on with them. Right. And, and uh, so I'm going to say, yeah. And by the way, I need you to help me promote my YouTube channel. <laughs> you know, YouTube's weird because YouTube doesn't give you very good analytics considering it's part of Google. You don't yeah. see your embeds for the most part. They don't give you a fair representation. We went from, we still are on YouTube. We do the live shows on YouTube, but then we put the shows up on Vimeo. And right. the, shows that we're getting, the, the shows that we're getting 50 views or 100 views are over 1,000 on Vimeo. And we're going, whoa. So we have no idea what we were really doing on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Frustrating. And, and I, can also, I can also tell you that if you drop... Um, 20 or $30 mm -hmm. into promoting a video, yes. all of a sudden you'll go from a dozen views or two dozen views to uh, 1,500, 2,000. Interesting. And so th that's the way they get you to spend mm -hmm. money with them. Yeah, because they said you can organically find people, and that's the best way to find them, but go find them. It's a right. little harder. You got to tag your head off on all the, for the search engines. And, and you notice Google does one thing interesting. When, they, when you do a search on Google, they only show you results from Google. They don't show you Vimeo videos ever, yeah. which is sort of tacky. Uh, Bing will, but not Google. Fascinating. Yeah. yeah, the only way I've ever been able to find a, a Vimeo video in a Google search is actually to put the word Vimeo in the search string. Interesting. Hmm. We should try that. Because otherwise it won't show up. Yeah, I did a, uh, I did a four part. Yeah, I did a four part video series for B and H. The very first training video series I did for them was about teleprompters, and it was every level of teleprompter from hmm. getting started to um, uh, international multi location prompting, and it was a four part series. I have no idea if it's anywhere on YouTube. I don't think it is, but it is available on. Um, on Vimeo, and I had to do a search for that recently. So uh, I put in Vimeo, B and H, Larry Becker, and it, it came up with that search string. Okay. And by the way, please don't do that search. Those are terrible videos. <laughs> it, I have a high, I have high cringe factor looking back at what I was doing five or six years ago. Uh, that's but that's the thing, th thing, Larry. When you're saying about being on camera, to get better, you've got to have that cringe. Uh, cringe factor going on on your previous ones or else you never get better absolutely and i really own it <laughs> i have <laughs> lots to cringe about i have old uh, uh old reels somewhere of when i used to do uh, news for the national association of photoshop professionals i used to do that every single week i would edit it myself i would shoot it myself and one of the things that i thought was uh, uh, an usable phrase was the phrase, check it out. So I would tell people, hey, we've got this new thing going on at the association. It's on the association website. It's a free download. Go check it out. And I would say the phrase, check it out, 
a dozen, two dozen times in a three minute video piece. And so then I edited together all of my check it out things. And, uh, and that was my, I guess, um, inspiration to never say that again. And then I also did a contest on nap news where I said, if I say check it out more than twice in any news episode, the first person to send me an email, I will send you a free year of association <laughs> membership. So, you know, so those I, verbal I believe... crutches are hard to get rid of. Yeah. They're yeah, not easy. They are. I, I had one. I'm always like, great. Um, it's like, great. Like, stop saying that. Yeah, it's like, great, great, great. Um, and it's hard because in oh, the see, middle I, of something, somebody says something, that go, that's from, really great. Great. There I go again. Yeah. It's like, check it out. The same thing. Yeah. Well, check it out was bad. Um, <laughs> there, are, there are some of them that are very specific in structure. <clears throat> and people that I've worked with have very specific ones. And I, I don't want to say them because you'll know exactly who it was and what they were saying. But there were some of them that, that my friends and coworkers, uh, they would, they would, it would just drive me crazy. I used to drive my team crazy whenever they were filming me. I would say the word now to reset at the beginning of a sentence. Now, what we're going to do next is, and I would say now a bit now. more than I should. Yep. Um, I, I do say um and ah. Uh, I don't think that's a problem. I've heard it from some people when it is a problem. And when you use it instead of silence uh, mm. as a space between words, and you hum the word um or you hum the word ah, uh, that's a little bit much. But I'll say um and ah, uh, and I don't have a big hang up with that. Right. I'm still kind of picky about um, <laughs> what I am saying on camera, though. Yeah. Now, now and, was one of uh, mine when we started. Now, yeah. now, stop it. Now, and now, <clears throat> and and I would catch myself, and people would go, "You're saying now again." Oh, I know. You know who you know who's it. terrible about the word now is Sean Hannity. I heard uh, I was listening to talk radio and I heard a he thirty second that. commercial and that guy said now a dozen times yep. in thirty seconds. <clears throat> That's interesting. And you know he's had thousands of radio broadcasts. And sure. Those are, and and I think part of what it is is they work with a lot of handlers. They work with producers, directors. Nobody tells them anything. Yeah. Ever. And th you've seen that and. A lot of times the producers go, well, no, don't mess with the talent. Yeah, but don't hurt the talent. Help them out when they're messing up. Sure. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of interesting. And I know when I started doing some recordings and that, I got some uh, hints from Rick, and I always have my list of verbal crutches not to use, so I go out of my way not to use them. I think one of the things is basically and quite basically. simply. Yep. There's a, I'm trying to think what most people say, and in, in TV news I've heard one that people say a lot when they're being interviewed, and I find myself saying this every once in a while, and I try and stay away from the word absolutely. Mm. It's just a simple thing that people use when a professional asks them some sort of question. I see it all the time. I saw it at NAB. I was doing a lot of interviews, and at NAB I would ask somebody a question, and they would say, absolutely, and then they would... Um, I guess they're confirming what it is that I asked them about. Are you guys the industry leader in this type of um, lens? Whatever. And, and they would say, absolutely. And then they would say what it is that their their right. point was. Right. But absolutely is, is used a lot. And I see that a lot in, like I said, TV news and that kind of thing. One of the things that was interesting about NAB, <clears throat> before I let the guys flip the camera on, I would always coach every interviewee, and I did 40 or 50 interviews there at NAB, and every single person was like, thank you very much, I appreciate that, I haven't uh, heard that before. I shouldn't say every person hadn't heard coaching before, but the vast majority of them were like, I've never heard that before, that's interesting, I, I appreciate you telling me that. And I absolutely, uh, uh, I had somebody come up afterwards and say, I've learned more from being interviewed by you for four minutes on this NAB thing than I've ever learned about being on video before because people didn't ever tell me those things. Well, have, you, know, you know who else is also at NAB? Another Larry. Do you know Larry Jordan? I don't. Larry I don't Jordan. Know I know the name. An, he's been around forever. He, he does a lot of training in 
Final Cut Pro premiere, Adobe Audition. But he was in TV and, and broadcasting for probably 30, 40 years. But he always says he's been in the industry 40 years. He probably has. Now, he has an interesting approach. He takes the approach of somebody who will come on and he says, I'm interviewing somebody from Canon today. Tell me, why should I talk to you? Well, we, we have a new lens. All right, cut the BS. What's the real reason to buy this lens? Sure. <laughs> just, sure. It, and it works. It keeps, and people want to be on. Great. But he basically insults them half the time. It's an interesting approach. Yeah, I think that's great. I What I was doing is strictly because it is an interview situation. And it is kind of weird because you're in somebody else's personal space. You're really, mm. really close to another person when you're talking to them on camera uncomfortably mm -hmm. so and you'll get directed by the camera operator to stand a little bit closer take a step a little bit closer so I would coach people before we would go on camera and I would say this is gonna seem really weird uh, <laughs> and you might think that I'm gonna ask you on a dinner date after we're finished <laughs> I'm gonna be very close to you and one of the other mm -hmm. things that's interesting is if you talk to the camera you'll connect better with the audience because an interview mm -hmm. between two people is actually an interview between three people. It's you, me, and the audience. And what we'd like to do is include the audience in. Now, they could either be voyeurs on a conversation where they're kind of listening in, in which case they're just going to see our ear the whole time, both of us talking to one another. Or if we address the camera, now I'm going to address the camera when I do the open. And then I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to turn and ask you a question. And you can be looking at me that whole time. And then when I ask you that question, when you start to answer, you can answer a little bit to me, but then turn and address the camera. And if you answer to the camera, you're bringing the audience in and you're connecting mm -hmm. with them. Now, you don't have to do that. If it's weird to you, if it's uncomfortable to you, talk to me. That's fine. But if you turn and talk to the camera, you'll connect better with that audience at home. And people are like, I didn't even think about that. And I said, yeah, and the weird part is I'm going to be looking in your ear the whole time <laughs> because I'm going to be so close to you and I'm just going to be looking at the side of your face. But what that communicates to the audience is Larry's interested in what this person is saying and I should be looking at that person. And when you have all these different eyes looking straight back at the camera, then the audience kind of looks around. Who should I be looking at? What should I be looking at? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's, a, it's a psychological thing. And so that's why I was coaching my interviewees. And they all seem to really appreciate it. And it also seemed to be news for most of them. That's because most people just put you on. And, yeah. and they just have to survive. Hey, speaking of interviewing, I did uh, a live trade show. I was actually in Florida about two and a half weeks ago for ah. uh, near Miami. It was Fort Lauderdale for the Lectora, Lectora Users Conference. It's an, it's an e-learning tool. <clears throat> Several hundred people were there, and it was fun. And we were streaming live. We did about eight shows live. And I bought some new microphones for that. I was looking for a good interview mic. I have a lot of mics. I've got about 20 mics, but nothing that I thought was good enough to just do this back and forth. I found right. a Rode interviewer, 129 okay. bucks. It's a great microphone. It has good yeah, resonance. I, I love Rode stuff. I do too. I, I never, had never heard of that one. 120, I bought two of them. I didn't need two. One would have been more than good enough. Um, it captures beautifully and, it, and it's built to capture the audio around your chest not up here so and yeah. it, i was surprised at how well it caught our patterns between two people and i can't wait i can't wait to get my hands on and try the new um road eng uh wireless kit because they have the wireless filmmaker kit and i have yes. that and it's great but they have an eng with that road stick mic on a transmitter and that, to me, seems like an It'll ideal be good. ENG kind of thing. It'll be good. And I'm, I'm with you. you know, our, our friend from Australia right next to you over here, mm -hmm. Rode makes some of the best microphones around. They, they're amazing. Yeah, they do. I'm very happy with yeah, it. I just, I just did something on uh, YouTube this week where I was talking about, I don't recommend, I think it was on YouTube, one of my videos this week, I don't recommend uh, smartphones for capturing business mm. videos but if you have mm. to if you're stuck that way and you absolutely have to go ahead and do that but my favorite mic for that is the Rode SmartLav Plus 
Yeah. It's a great mm. microphone for that. We had to, uh, we used that mic recently. One of our customers had to record something for us and he doesn't have a microphone. So I said, and he recorded his original stuff on an iPhone. I said, tell you what, I will send you a Rode Smart Lav. Connect it to your mic, to, to your iPhone. You won't have to do any work. Just connect it. Download the software. It's free. And send me the file. And he did. He was, he was able yeah. to figure it out. And <clears throat> it sounded way better than just recording it to his phone. And it's a good mic for, what is it, about 75 bucks? Nah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Really, really good mic. And Larry, I was very interested in your uh, video about the, the cardinal sin on video about uh, recording the audio through the camera. Uh, there's a yeah. business here that does quite a good job of doing his own uh, recording, his video, but it said it lets itself down because he doesn't have correct sound and he's done such a, such a good job on the video quality, but the sound quality just lets him down. Well, and, and I don't think people really realize mm. how that undermines all the other efforts that you're putting into something because people are willing to forgive a little bit of a graininess, uh, some bad shadows. Mm. They'll forgive mm. a little bit of video issue. But if they've got an issue with what they're hearing and it doesn't sound good, that is it's just this dead giveaway that you're not serious about your production at all. And you don't, it's, it's one of those things where the end consumer of the video doesn't have to be an audio specialist. They don't have to be from the industry. They can be a, an end consumer that has no experience at all creating anything video. And if you sound echoey and distant and far away, you just kill your credibility. It's the same with a vertical video from a cell phone. If you're, all <laughs> your videos are vertical, <laughs> it's just terrible. I'm just amazed that uh, with the technology, how it allows you to do that. I'm just waiting for the time where they'll change the technology so it will film it correctly no matter how you've got your phone held. <laughs> I can't believe that they haven't done that yet. I don't know why it yeah. hasn't been figured out. <laughs> they can flip everything else when you're doing that, but it's, uh, you see so many people filming that way and doing it for important things, not just uh, little selfies. Yeah, exactly. I, I think there should be a, a preference setting in your camera or in your smartphone that is always film horizontally. Yeah. Now, Larry, I saw you were saying about you uh, using some new software. Was that the screen flow from uh, Telestream? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, they haven't, they made a huge update from three to four and a huge update from four to five as far as adding features and functions, you know, green screen gets added in or something else major gets added in. Um, I would say from five to six, the giant collection of improvements has been more nuanced. So, yeah, it, it, they've made some updates and changes, but there are things like the physics of a transition action or something mm -hmm. like that. That's kind of nuanced, and, it, and it's kind of nerdy. Uh, there are a lot more pro controls on multiple channels in audio. That's, again, getting into the higher end. And I'm blown away that this is all part of a $99 program mm -hmm. uh, for a $35 upgrade from 5 to 6 it's incredible what you can do, and I'm doing very little screen capture with this piece of software that was originally intended to be a great screen capture utility. I'm doing all kinds of video production with it, and I'm very, very happy. It's almost incredible the things that you can do with it, and pretty, uh, pretty amazing that you can get these finished videos at high resolution output, but also with encoding that's on par with the, the work that we were doing at the Kelby Studios coming out of uh, Premiere Pro. Yeah, it is excellent. I did pick up one of the tips on one of your videos this week. I'm really keen to try it out, is how to look thinner on video. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I... I was hoping that Larry's video diet would go viral. I, I'm still going to work on that one. There are, yeah, there are five or six different things that you can do that will help you look thinner on camera. So, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you enjoyed that. That was kind of fun. 
I'll, I'll put something out and see how it works. As long as it doesn't make me look too thin and narrow, I think I think the trick is just don't go too far. Exactly, exactly. But but there were more than just the uh, squeezing the video kind of thing going on. There were camera position ideas and some mm -hmm. lighting ideas and some head position ideas. And, uh, yeah, so there there is a nice little collection. Now, Larry, let's talk... I don't know if you have, have uh, heard of Barbara Catlin. Do you remember Barbara Catlin? Vaguely, well, yeah. She refused to ever be videoed without a spotlight right under her chin. <laughs> and that gets rid of all the wrinkles and makes you look much, much younger. Sure, sure. That's uh, I see that a lot in Periscope. There are a couple of uh, folks that always have a ring light for their yeah. Periscope <laughs> episodes. And what's so funny to me is the ring light is over bright, and so it'll actually crush any kind of uh, brightness values, and it actually makes them look really bad. <laughs> they look like they're under cellophane or under plastic or something. They're just all washed out. They look like a, a hockey mask or something. Sounds like and, a Beverly uh, Hills <laughs> patient. <laughs> but they it's love like it. That, well, they're, it's, it's always when people do things to make themselves look nice, and it does the absolute opposite. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Uh, the Kenny Rogers syndrome, syndrome mm, right? Yeah. Or, yeah, a little over the top. Yeah, he looked permanently burned after he did some laser treatments. It just it didn't do well yeah. for him. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I think I'm going to keep this. Uh, yeah. I, I, yeah. I don't know. I, I just yeah. don't want to go under the knife for... for no, that doesn't sound fun at all. Mm. Mm -mm. I know somebody who had that gastric bypass, and yeah. then six months later, she lost 200 pounds, and she had to have a full body lift. Uh, they cut you in half. They literally cut you oh in half and gosh. pull you up. Ah. I know. <laughs> oh, that's no. awful. No. <laughs> I just, I, but, but my, my fear of plastic surgery that. is, it's also probably the reason I haven't gotten any recent uh, parts in Hollywood. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's, I, I it's saw, scary. Larry, one of your favorite lights was the Westcott Flex light. I think uh, Rick has one of them. I do. I love the flex light. They're great. Yeah. I, when we were in um, in Vegas at NAB, I had one of the representatives from Westcott on one of my live one-hour shows. And it was really interesting because I did have uh, an IFB, and I could hear what was going on in the background. And while this guy was showing, while Brandon was showing the Westcott flex panel, it weighs 5.6 ounces. Mm-hmm. It's a one by one. It's super, super bright. It's waterproof. It's flexible. And th it's incredible. And he was showing this thing off. And I promise you, everybody behind the scenes was saying in on the radio that's the IFB that was coming through to me. I thought it was just supposed to be stage direction, but they're all like, hey, get him to get me one. I want one of those. That's great. I want. <laughs> Because these it's guys can cool hide all these heavy lights on the stage, and uh, and they love these lightweight things. I used that live when we did that trade show recently, and and we didn't have a sign in the booth. We said, you know what, they'll just show up to look at that light, and they did. They were like, what is that? Wow, yeah, now, they're touching did you have it. Have battery pack? Uh, no, we we had uh, battery. We had power behind us, so that was easy. I didn't okay. get the battery. I should get the battery pack. It is the coolest yeah, light. The battery's a little pricey. It's three hundred bucks. I know. It's but, it's almost the same price as the light, which is what, four fifty? <clears throat> right. Well, it depends on which one you're after. And uh but what's so amazing to me is even that little three inch by ten inch version mm -hmm. of the light is very, very bright. It's very usable. Yep. And with uh battery pack on that, I would carry that around all day long in a trade show compared to what I had to carry around a couple years oh, back in yeah. a TV. I had one of those one-by-one -one panels, mm -hmm. and those were a workout, carrying those things around. Was that like a light panel? Yeah. Yeah, they, they weighed about 5, 10 pounds. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And they, actually, I don't know how they do it with the physics of it, but it starts out weighing 5 or 10 pounds, and mm -hmm. as you walk, it actually <laughs> gains weight. <laughs> <It's a bite. laughs> uh, that's so true. 
Hey, did you did you ever see the other Westcott light, the ice light? Oh yeah, I've seen the I, ice light. I have that one too. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. Plus, you look like a it's Jedi, like which saving. is cool. <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, what are you doing with the ice light? I'm just curious. Um, I've been using, I've actually used it on some shows. I've used it on okay. some individual podcasts where I'm just sitting there. I put it kind of at a 45 degree angle to me, and it lights up, yeah. shadows a little bit on one side, lights up the other, and it looks great. It's a great video light. It's very good for photography. Um, it is. It's just a fun light. Not to mention, it just looks really cool. <laughs> Yeah, it does. I saw one at NAB probably uh, three or f three years ago mm -hmm. from another manufacturer, and it oh. was like 125 bucks. And I went, "Oh, that's kind of interesting. 125. What does Westcott yeah. think about that?" Uh, 500. Yeah, it violated <laughs> the uh, patent, and it was not oh. available for sale in the United States. Uh -oh. So <laughs> it was kind of interesting. Somebody probably uh, figured, "Oh, they're an Australian company. They won't come after us." Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So it was, it was somebody who had a unit not for sale. Interesting. Now let's talk a little bit about other gear. I saw a video you did not too long ago with the one of the guys from Canon. I can't remember his name. Was it Rob? I, I don't remember right now. Uh, and talking about sure. the 5DS and the 5DSR. Yeah. So that was... That was a live event that we did with B and H. Yeah. And Gregor Gregory Heisler and That's Rudy yep. Winston were there. Mm -hmm. So of Rudy. course Gregory Heisler, the world famous uh, photographer mm -hmm. with more I think Newsweek and Time covers yeah. than everybody else combined. And just a brilliant photographer. Mm -hmm. And then also Rudy Winston. So we got to have a wonderful time for an hour and a half, two hours live talking about these two cameras. And it was great. the incredible resolution. It was a lot of fun. And, and, and Gregory was one of the most accessible people. I was surprised. You know, you, sometimes you get the photographers, they get a little artisty and right down to earth. He was funny. Yeah. And what was so great was leading up to this event because we knew we had to do this live event and we were going to do it in in a very specific time frame it had to do with the day that uh canon actually started shipping mm -hmm. the units and gregory had to capture images in advance and it was my first interaction with him i mean i had known who he was for a long time mm -hmm. but his the, the way you put it is exactly it. He was so accessible. He was so forthcoming. And what was nice was B&H has a good rela relationship with Gregory, and they made this arrangement. And then, of course, Cannon has a great relationship with Gregory. And so everybody was fine with him, no matter what he said. And he is so known and accomplished and... Uh, uh, I guess just famous in his own right that he was fine talking about the truth about this camera. Now it's a great camera. He's got these couple of cameras. Uh, super high resolution. I think, Larry, I think we're getting a little static. There it goes. We were getting a little static on your line. On my line? My line. Yep. It's coming from you. I'm sorry. I'm sorry to hear that. It, it happens. I, 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 it's... It's the Florida to California it's connection good. sometimes. Uh, <laughs> it's good. I, I, I apologize for giving you any static. It got really it's fuzzy. Got really bad. Uh, you know what? We're going to call you right back. Okay. okay. And let's see if that clears up the line. We've seen Skype do this. Okay. okay. Uh, one second with I'll us. Be, I'll be here. Yeah, I'll be sorry. Here. Yeah. sorry about that, folks. But unfortunately, Skypes and connections sometimes go bad. So we're going to get him yeah, right back English. on. To see how usually, the live show works. Usually, this oh, okay. clears up everything. Yeah. So, so what do we think? Oh, you sound great now. Absolutely. That's weird. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Skype does that sometimes. All of a sudden, you went from very clear to we. It was. <laughs> okay. So now my question <laughs> is: Did I hit the wrong button and not give you my video? Wait a second. Yes. Right. We need your video again. Okay, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I apologize. No, that's okay. This is live broadcasting. <laughs> it happens. Um, yeah, we but you were talking about stuff. Gregory and, and the work he did and how accessible he was. Well, and he was real. Mm -hmm. uh, he, was, he was very humble. He was very yeah. available. He was 
going out of his way to do anything he could. He left these huge, beautiful prints at the uh, office there. Yeah. He was very accommodating later when we needed to use those images for reviews and and other types of graphics. He didn't have any problem with us using those kinds of things. So he was just very gracious and, and just the neatest guy in the world. I'm really excited that he's going to be uh, for the very first time, an instructor at Photoshop World. And I'm going to Photoshop World in mid-July, and he'll be one of our new instructors there. Oh, he'll be fun. Yeah. He'll be fun. I was actually surprised when he said he was 61. He didn't look it. Yeah, not at all. Not at all. Yeah. But the uh, I think the bow tie kind of gives it away. <laughs> That's that kind of 80s look. <laughs> it is. Uh, well, I like because he was laughing. He goes, see these pictures? That was an arduous 27 minutes to get all of these. <laughs> that's all the time he had on the camera. But that's, it, that's it incredible. Good. Now, question for you. You said you ordered one. Did you get it? I ordered one of those cameras? Yeah. Yeah, no. No, okay. I did, I, I, I did not. I, uh, I ended up going a different route. So that, it, was, it was consistent with what I wanted to do at the time, but yeah. not consistent with what I'm doing now. And so, uh, so that's not where I am. So my cameras that I have right now are the 70D until an mm -hmm. 80D comes in. They're very hard to get a hold of. Are they really? And, uh, yeah, and a 6D. The 60, so, yeah. okay. I've got both the 70 and the 80. Yeah, the 80 is nice. It, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's an improved 70. Right. It, a lot of people get angry because they go, it doesn't have this, it doesn't have that. Sure. But it is improved. It The video is better. The photo, what does it have? Six, I forgot how many f focus points. It's got a lot more. 59, right. something like that. Uh, right. A lot of them are cross focus. It just is clean. Uh, and the focus is beautiful on it. It's just, it's just really nice. I wish it had HDMI output. It has none. None at all. Right. But other than that, I don't care. I mean, I've got a Atomos... But you know what? I don't want to use them all the time. Maybe if we're doing a professional shoot, yes. But for the regular stuff, we don't need them. Um, sure. I've got the 7D Mark II, which I love. I, I was almost yeah. going to get rid of it. And I said, no, I actually do like it. And I know people have got the 5D Mark III, and they said the 7D Mark II video is almost exactly the same. Yeah, hmm. I wouldn't doubt it. That doesn't it's surprise that clean. me at all. Well, you know, I've... You know, you were you were partially influential on this one, but uh, this weekend or beginning of next week, all of my Nikon's are going on sale. I've got oh, three wow. of them: two D seven fifties and one D A ten, and we're gonna go back to Canon. I still, I agree that Canon doesn't always have the most fancy updates. They don't have the touch screens, but you know, I love the color rendering of of the Canon. They just look good nikon's good yeah. and i took some great shots with it but i feel more comfy in the canon world the ergonomics and things like that i just like better i did get that yeah. nikon d500 and i returned it within a day two days uh -huh. i was underwhelmed I, I don't everybody loves it so much i i didn't i thought it was I like, like i like canon menus better they are they are they're clean they're easy i kind and of wish though that I don't know why Nikon can figure out power aperture uh. and Canon doesn't have that yet. That's one yeah. thing that I, I would really like to see in a Canon body. Yep. Now, here's one question. Uh, I've asked different photographers that. We, we recently had Jason Lanier, who's a very well-known photographer. He's now become, he gave up all of his Nikons and went to um, Sony. And okay. so, he, of course, he's been blasted by all the Nikon people, but... The Sony people are happy, and he, he loves mirrorless right now. And I've always asked this question to people who always say, without a mirror, it's not the same. What, what, why do you think we need a mirror in today's day and age? I don't know that you need the mirror so much. I, I understand both camps, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I like mirrorless. I have a good experience with mirrorless cameras. Yeah. But uh, I think the last time I was on the show, we talked about a couple of the weird little nitpicky things that I don't love about mirrorless cameras, and I don't know why Sony can't figure this out. Mm. And one of them is, 
I like chimping, so I love to look at the images that I just shot on that LCD panel on the back of any camera, sure. any time. Um, but there are times that I don't want to do that. So I keep my little nose pressed to the back of the camera, and I'm looking through the viewfinder, and I'm shooting and I'm shooting, and when I'm using a mirrorless camera with an electronic viewfinder, the EVF is what the rear panel is, mm -hmm. even if you're looking at, through it. And while that sounds like a good idea, in other words, if you're maybe outside and you're trying to prevent glare, and now you can see to review your images where outside there's too much glare to look at that back panel, mm -hmm. fine. But I want an option where I can turn off the review when I'm looking through the viewfinder and not have it be there. But when I look at the back of the camera, the review is there. So uh, hmm. it, it's very frustrating. So I was, I was doing some wildlife photography with a mirrorless camera. Uh, and it was a Sony. Had it to my face. And I'm clicking away and taking all these nice little pictures. And I noticed that while I'm kind of looking around in the environment and getting ready to take the next picture and I take a picture, all of a sudden one of the birds that I had taken a picture of just seemed to freeze. He wasn't moving anymore. It was just a replay. <laughs> so, so it was frustrating to me because if I want to see those images back again, I'll yeah. look at the back of the camera. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And so that's one thing. Uh, one of the other things is that the I think the low light experience is better with an EVF because it can amplify things that mm. are in the dark. So in that way, it's better. But I think there are also areas where you go outside in bright sunshine and the EVF doesn't do quite as good a job with shadow detail because right. it actually has to compress that, that image information. Yep. So you have mm -hmm. really visible, viewable things that are in the highlight areas, but in the shadow areas of your EVF viewing experience, you can't tell what's going on, where with an optical viewfinder, you would be able to. And I think Sony's gotten better and better at this, but yeah. you still, one of the things that I noticed last time I was using Sony's high-end products is I have to push my eye really deep into that little eye cup and almost get it to where it dents up into my eye mm -hmm. here to get enough light blockage, ambient light blockage, right. so that the shadow detail <laughs> would show. So. Yeah. It's, it's a frustrating, concentrating experience to use an EVF in some circumstances when you've used an optical viewfinder forever. Right. And it is funny how a lot of the... Oh, go ahead, Jeff. So I said, I've, I find this, the same thing. I came across that last week with my uh, Panasonic. I was trying to take a photo and you take a picture and then you try to reframe it and you've lost it because by the time it reframes it's gone what you was trying to take mm. a picture of yeah it reviews it back on the screen and you think oh it's gone well i imagine that um i would as a, a long-term user or owner of that kind of system i would just turn off the image review and right. require that I push the button for image review until mm. Sony figures this out as an option. It's just a silly little piece of software, so they should be able to do it. But until these uh, manufacturers figure this out as an option, um, I would just leave review image review off, mm -hmm. or I would get in the habit of that half press, because the half press mm -hmm. gets you back in, in photography right. mode. So yeah. y y you'll yeah. work with it. I mean, people are going to look at me and go, what are you whining about? All you have to do is half press, Larry. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, but, so, uh, what do you, what do you think about, I saw a review you did on the Canon M3. They're mirrorless. It actually right. looked really cute. Have, have you yeah. played with that one? Yeah. And, you know, Canon came late to the party and they got mm -hmm. bashed by a lot of people. And so... They're never going to lead the way in the mirrorless market. They didn't mm. want to go after it like uh, Fujifilm or okay. some, uh, Sony, some of the others. And I think also that you have an interesting dichotomy between the U.S. market and the Japanese market mm -hmm. and also a difference between the, and I don't want to dig too deep here, the employees at Canon USA versus the employees at Canon in Japan. Right. I don't think they always see eye to eye. No. And so 
it was kind of interesting when the M3 came out six months earlier outside the U.S. And uh, it, it took that long to show up here. Mm -hmm. But when it did, uh, I think it's a worthwhile little camera. It's at the right price point for what it is. I think my bigger challenge with it is that because Canon isn't jumping with both feet fully, wholeheartedly into right. this market, that you aren't going to expect a lot of accessories, a lot of lens options. Mm -mm. You get a little. And you're going to have to go to third party for a lot more lens options. So right. th there are trade-offs there. And that's unfortunate. I think if I really, really wanted to go to mirrorless, depending on what it was that I wanted to do, I would lean toward Sony or Fujifilm. Uh, Pentax <clears throat> has a nice yeah. mirrorless setup, too. Yeah, Panasonic's I, good. It for what it yeah. does, like the GH4 has always been a good camera. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Olympus, and see, again, you, those, those are the two top ones. Did you hear what I just said? Yeah. I said absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but every now and then, that's fine. Yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. Our counter said you only said one today. <laughs> okay. I don't know no, if that's, that's the absolute truth. It's fun. Um, yeah, I mean, the M3 looked fun. It looked like a fun little camera. And yeah. And, uh, but, you know, Sony has another issue, at least in my book. I find it irritating having a battery that lasts me an hour <laughs> or an hour and a half. I don't have any Sony yeah. cameras, but I have friends who do. And if you're lucky, if you get an hour and a half, whereas with a lot of the Nikon or, or Canon batteries, you get quite a bit longer, three, four hours on many of them. It's a big difference. Well, and I, I've never liked that they, in a lot of cameras, they don't even give you a separate charger. You end up spending no. $30. That's I just spent $2,600 on a camera, but I have to spend an extra 30 to buy a wall charger I know. because my camera is the charger. And the other crazy thing is where the charging light is, is inside that little plug bay on the I side know. of the camera. You can barely see it. It's mm -hmm. crazy. Just yeah. it's just silly. <clears throat> but you know, one thing we haven't talked about is that the earthquakes in Japan have really damaged the photo industry. Nikon and Sony may not even be able to ship products for four months. They've been hit that hard. Uh -huh. Sony said they had major damage. Uh, Nikon, I think, had major damage. They just released that D five hundred. They can't get them to mm -hmm. people. Uh, the the A sixty three hundred from Sony is just stuck. They can't get them out. Uh, Canon, surprisingly, had no damage, according to them. Um, I'm not sure where they were located as opposed to where they were, but um, they haven't had a lot of damage or any. So they said they haven't experienced any major delays. Uh, right. And I don't know what happened to Panasonic, Olympus, or anybody else, but the two major ones, they've had, they've had real issues. Um, not a good situation. Yeah, I agree. I, I think, though... Um It'll be interesting to see what happens in the longer term. I think what's very interesting is the recognition of the value of the competitor mm -hmm. in Japan as opposed to American business. In American business, for the most part, there are a lot of situations where if somebody doesn't like you or is a competitor to you in business, mm -hmm. they'll do anything and everything to put you out of business. Right. And I think there was a lot of respect in Japan, yes. for example, with Fukushima. And uh, there were a lot of polite, helpful things that competitors mm -hmm. were doing for one another. So I think it's a different attitude there. And so I don't think it will be especially uh, detrimental to the companies. In other words, I don't think that the companies will suffer to the point of going under as a result no, of that. No, but, but in essence, Canon actually came out ahead. They're sort of like the tortoise and the hare. They're always really behind, but they seem to always catch up somehow. And if you think about it, Sony makes almost all the chips except Canon's. Canon makes their exactly. own chips. Sony makes it for just about everyone. Sony's not producing right now. Everyone's not getting. And Canon yeah. goes, da, 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 we'll see you later. We're just going to keep on trotting. And um, they would be smart if they could release like the 5D Mark IV that's been rumored forever. Um, I don't know if they will. They, they definitely needed a 6D Mark II. There's been rumors of that. I, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to come up with, but I'm looking forward to it. I've been really thinking of getting that 5D S. 
I don't know yet. I want to hold off to see, do I get a 5D4 when it comes out? Do I get a 5DS? I want one good full frame. I don't have any full frame right now by selling the Nikons. So I'm sure. debating. Yep. It will be interesting. It will and, be. Let's uh, see what they do. Uh, yeah. I think, I, think we'll, I think we'll all be pleasantly surprised later this year. I have absolutely no inside information other than a few friends are saying, I can't tell you what's going to happen. Right, but, and uh, I've been hearing that too, that there's going to be some coming. good stuff. I, I have friends at some of the camera company, and they go, yeah, I, I don't know anything, but, you know, it's going to be good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard that quite a few times. I'm going, this, this might be good. So, anyway. Well, Larry, we are at the end of our time. Um, how can people get a hold of you if they want to get any more information, training, or coaching from you? Sure. The easiest thing is just my name followed by .tv. So just LarryBecker.tv. And uh, you can go to the website there. And the Contact Us form at that website sends me an email. Okay. So that's how you do it. Did you know that there's a Larry Becker magician? I did. <laughs> yeah, he's a mentalist. And I've seen I've seen some of his stuff. I used to be into magic when I was much younger. Yeah. And then I was, I think I was in my late 20s, and I found out that there's actually a magic company that had a catalog, and this was before there was a whole, whole lot of internet sales and mm -hmm. things like that. So it's Abbott's Magic Catalog, and I got oh, a yeah. hold of it. Mm -hmm. And I was calling them about something, and when I called them on the phone and I said, yeah, my name is Larry Becker, and they went, oh, wow, and they were blown <laughs> away that I was... I was calling them, and so I, I asked a couple of questions, and they were like telling me all these secrets and magic tricks and stuff that I didn't know. I was just a consumer, but they thought I was Larry Becker, and they thought That's they were funny. telling me it was <laughs> And you were Larry Becker. <laughs> That's funny. And your training is going to be out. The, ne the new training is going to be out shortly on how yeah, to present. I, I hesitate to say next week. I know it will be done in editing, but I don't know that it will be – uh, posted because it takes a little bit more than that to right. to get the uh, structure there so that people can watch it. But the editing finishes this weekend, and then I'll have that class all about how to be better on camera. Great. That'll be good. That'll be good. And don't think that's so. something you don't need out there. If you are doing anything, and everybody's on camera more and more nowadays, be prepared. Makes all the difference in the world. Yep. And the, ver and the very simple tips and that that anybody can follow. It's not uh, like Larry was saying. Some of the movie, real true movie people, just get too involved. But these are just down to earth, easy things that you can all follow. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly it. It's it's targeted at people who need to be on video mm -hmm. for business that have no background in Hollywood, that have no background in film. Normal people. <laughs> yeah. Regular folks. Regular folks. Well, if Absolutely. you're watching the show, please subscribe. We're going to be up on Vimeo a little bit later today. And Larry, as always, a pleasure having you on and, and seeing you again. We wish you the best with all the, the training that you're doing. Um, you know, Jeff and I will buy anything you do. So we're, we're definitely there. Yeah. We, we'll buy it just to have it. So we'll, Rick we'll and be, Jeff, we'll be I'd supporting love to have you. you in the family and I'm happy to have you do a test class for me. Just give me your feedback and you get the free access. Oh, sounds good. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you whatever feedback you want. <laughs> and thanks, we're very sir. honest. So, <laughs> um, anyway, well, thanks everyone. We will see you guys next week on Tech Down Over. Have a good one, everyone. Take bye bye. Bye for now.